So let's get back to our story. So where are they going to go to learn about Christ and his church? What's the recipe book that they're going to use? Bible. Okay, the Bible. So they're going to use that. And we've been talking the last couple of weeks. They've gone through and they're coming up with a recipe. And what is the main recipe that they've come up with so far as the essential recipe in their search for understanding Christianity? Okay, we call it the basic gospel message. And that's basically Christ, right? So the foundation of Christianity is Christ. And it's summed up in the gospel message. And we all know the gospel message, right? Yeah. Okay. And last week we got into some new territory here. We found out that the foundation of our faith is Christ. But we read in scripture several passages that Paul tells us that we have to be on guard out there because there are some people preaching another gospel. Remember that? We talked in Galatians. You know, another gospel is going to be preached out there. And Paul says, let that person be accursed. And in 2 Corinthians, we talked about there's going to be some false apostles out there that are going to masquerade as apostles who are going to be teaching things contrary to the gospel. And I keep saying about the gospel, what do I mean? Yeah. When Paul's using this, he said there's other people out there teaching another gospel. What's he talking about? What frame of reference is he giving us when he says preaching the gospel, another gospel? The life of Christ and Christ's message. Yeah, what was that? Message about God. Yeah, the gospel message, that basic gospel message. They're preaching another message, another gospel message. Now we looked in 2 Peter. There's false teachers who are going to introduce heresies that are contrary. And they're warning us of people out there are going to be teaching things contrary. What is our basis as Christians to use as truth? What can we default to to know absolute truths? Where do we go for authoritative sources? The church or the magisterium? What else? Tradition and the book. We use our three sources of authority. That's our standard in our faith to determine if someone else is teaching something contrary to our faith. But be aware of that because how many of you got that on your door before? There are people coming out to your door they say, I'd like to teach, I'd like to tell you about another gospel of Jesus Christ. So we need to know standards that are absolutely true and judge what other people are saying to those standards to determine if what they are saying is true or not. I want every Christian to be a greedy Christian. You know, sometimes I tell people, say, isn't that contrary to Christianity? <laughs> Well, in this sense, I don't think so. What does it mean to be a greedy Christian? Learn everything. To learn all you can. That's half of the equation. To live it. To grow in it. And to accept it. God is sitting there with his hands open, offering abundant graces to people. Wouldn't it be a shame just to nitpick and just take a little bit here and a little bit there of what God is willing to offer you? Why not open both hands and accept it and shovel it in? And that's Last what I'm time, encouraging you to we do. We talked about the growth of a Christian. Well, how does a Christian become a greedy Christian, right? And we talked about a couple passages in Scripture. When you're a baby Christian, what does a baby Christian feed on? Milk. milk. We talked about milk. Paul uses milk in his epistles. You need to feed a baby Christian milk. It's just like a regular baby. A baby, as I said last week, is not going to grow on a Big Mac. You start with milk. And this is what we should do for every Christian that's a baby Christian or an old Christian that needs to grow up. You first start feeding them the milk. And what is the milk? 
The basic gospel message, who Christ is, what he did for us. But then we expanded it a little bit more. We went to the book of Hebrews. And the author of Hebrews brought it a step further. He tells us now how we can grow up as a Christian. He says, you first have milk, but then when you grow up, you eat what? Meat. Meat. And what, did Paul, what did the author say in Hebrew? Solid. Solid food. So he says, once you got the milk, folks, don't be a baby all your life. Grow up. Then start taking in the solid food. And that's hopefully, you know, what you're doing here. You're trying to get some more solid food you can grow Bottom up. of the page to the last paragraph. Could somebody read the first two sentences for me? The bottom, uh, paragraph, last paragraph, page two. Christ is the essential ingredient of our faith. But we find out something. Is it just Christ himself? Or is that main ingredient supplemented with something else to give us a bigger picture? Well, let's look up this passage here that we've, we're running into. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21 through 23. And let's see what the Bible tells us. The book of things beneath his feet, and he gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in him. So what's the scripture associating the church with? Christ. With Christ. Christ is saying now the church is also his body. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 through 32. And you're going to recognize this verse. Subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands. What was that verse again? I didn't quite hear it. <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm going to get in trouble. Go ahead. Yeah, wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of his wife, just as Christ is the head of the church. He himself the Savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her, to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies, he who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. All right. Probably heard One of my favorite passages that really tells us the relationship of Christ. In verse 23, what does it tell Christ is head of the church, right? Mm -hmm. Christ is head of the church. Then in verse 31, we kind of hear this thing from the Old Testament, the verse. For a reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife so that two shall become one flesh. The two shall become one. And look at the next verse. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and his church. So what is it telling us the relationship of Christ and his church? They are one. They are one. Just like a husband and wife becomes one in, fle one in flesh. Christ and his church are one. One. 